All right, folks, so the next series of videos that we're going to go through are on how to, uh, well, first of all, what the Henry system of classification for fingerprints is, uh, why it's important, and more importantly, uh, how you can take a set of 10 prints that you've classified in terms of their fingerprint types and then turn them into a Henry system of classification. Um, first of all, to help you understand kind of why the Henry system is important, let me give you a scenario. Let's imagine that you're a police investigator and uh, you've been called out to um, a lonely stretch of, of desert highway and uh, a body's been found next to the side of the road and you don't know who the person is. Uh, there were no witnesses that saw the body get dumped. Um, we, there are no identifying features on the body. The uh, person doesn't have any identification. So we have no idea who this person is. Uh, so this body is going to be taken uh, to the office of the medical examiner where they're going to do an autopsy. And then also they're going to do their best at the ME's office to try to identify who this, this dead person is. One of the things they're going to do with the decedent is they're going to roll their fingerprints uh, in ink and then they're going to roll those prints onto a card. Uh, in the hopes that maybe this person has been fingerprinted before uh, and maybe those fingerprints are on file. Uh, maybe this person had committed a crime and uh, so when they were arrested they were fingerprinted or maybe just as a normal average citizen maybe they maybe they applied for a concealed carry weapons permit and they they needed to be fingerprinted for that or maybe they worked as a nurse and they needed to have a background check done and so they were fingerprinted for that. In fact, in, in Arizona, there are millions of people's fingerprints on file. And so maybe our hope is that this, this dead person has been fingerprinted before, and maybe we can find the fingerprint card on file that matches the fingerprints we took at the medical examiner's office. The problem, though, is where do we go to search for those fingerprints uh, in our file? You know, we have these file cabinets full of these millions of fingerprint cards, or we have digital files of fingerprints. How do we search? We can't do it by last name. Um, certainly fingerprint cards could be filed by last name, but we have no idea who this person is. We don't know if they're a, a Smith or a, a Johnson or a Rodriguez or whoever they are. So the last name, fingerprints filed by last name, doesn't do us any good. What would be better then is if the fingerprints were filed based on the types of prints that were on the card. For example, if uh, the majority of the prints on the card were whorls, we'd want to find fingerprint cards where the majority of the fingerprints were whorls. And so we want some other way to classify and file cards that's not just based on the name of the person. And that's where the, the Henry system comes in. Now, the reason we, we call it the Henry system is it's, it's named after uh, Sir Edward Richard Henry, uh, who was uh, a scientist and a police officer from the UK. Um, he actually served in, in the Indian Civil Service and was actually in, uh, promoted rather, to Inspector General in Bengal in India in 1891, and he was fascinated with fingerprints. Uh, he later became the head of the Metropolitan uh, Police of London. But the most important thing that Henry did was in 1897, he proposed a new system of classification for fingerprints, uh, which he titled the Classification Use of Fingerprints. Uh, and after campaigning a few years, in, in 1901, he finally was able to get Scotland Yard in the UK to actually adopt his, his system of classification. Uh, a few years later, that same system of classification was adopted here in the United States. And it's the same uh, system of classification we use in the United States currently. Uh, it is not the only system of classification. Um, Dr. Juan Bustetich uh, in uh, South America he was an Argentinian police officer. He also developed a system of classification that's used in many countries in South America. But here in the United States, uh, we use the Henry system. So what is the Henry system? Um, the system is a way to take fingerprint cards and to, to, to classify them so that we can store them uh, in a means other than just by alphabetically by the person's last name. Uh, it, it does this by allowing us to logically categorize 10 fingerprint, 10 print cards rather, uh, by grouping them based on the pattern types that are present on the card. So then what this system allows us to do is to uh, more effortlessly uh, search through large numbers of fingerprint records in order, to find, in order to find fingerprints that are a closer match to the gross physiological characteristics of the ones you might have to compare them to. Um, this makes it useful then in finding fingerprint cards with patterns that are the same. 
Um, in terms of some strengths and weaknesses of the Henry system, uh, the Henry system uh, is great in helping us classify prints and excluding suspects. But it's important to remember that the Henry system can never be used to individually identify a suspect. And that's because although no two people have the exact same fingerprints, uh, it is possible for two different persons to have the same Henry classification. So a Henry classification is actually considered a class characteristic and not an individual characteristic and therefore can't be used to identify a person conclusively. But it, it helps us to narrow down drastically the list of possibilities by doing this Henry classification. Now, a Henry classification. Uh, the system itself um, categorizes prints using six parts. And these, these parts are important for you to know. Uh, the six parts of the system are the primary, the secondary, the subsecondary, the major, the key, and the final. And over the course of the next few videos, we're going to go through each of these and tell you, uh, teach you how to, to do each of these six parts. Uh, when we look at a fingerprint card uh, that has a Henry on it, you'll see the Henry classification is going to appear in the top right-hand corner of the card in this box up here. So here, here are the individual fingerprint classifications. So we can see that this fingerprint card has been classified, the whorls, the loops have all been classified. You can see the type of whorl and the tracings and the ridge counts have been there. Um, but we also see that this Henry, this card has been classified using the Henry system as well. Because each of these uh, annotations is going to be important in, in generating this Henry classification. So this is what a Henry looks like. A Henry consists of, um, like I say, six parts. Uh, the primary, the secondary, the subsecondary, the major, the key, and the final. Uh, basically, it's a, a table that consists of 12 boxes. The top boxes we call the numerator, and then the bottom boxes we call the denominator. So you notice each part, or almost each part, has two values, one in the numerator one in the denominator. So, for example, the primary, there's a number in the, in the numerator, the top, and there's a number in the bottom, which is the denominator. So if we're generating a Henry, we're going to draw a set of 12 boxes. Right. Now, when we do a Henry, we do it in a particular order. So when we're looking to generate a Henry system classification, we do it in this order. We start first by developing what's called the primary, uh, which deals with the whorls in the fingerprint. Uh, then we look at what's called the secondary, uh, which deals with the index fingers. Then we look at the subsecondary, which deals with basically the middle fingers of the hand. Then we look at the major, which deals with the thumbs. Uh, then we look at the key, which is looking at uh, the first um, loop uh, and its ridge count. And then we look at the final, which deals with the pinky fingers. So we're dealing with each of the, the fingers of the hand, but we do them in a particular order. Again, we start with the primary. Then we do the secondary, the subsecondary, the major, the key, and the final. So each step is, is important. Now, so here's, here is a, a, a fingerprint card that each fingerprint has been classified, and the, we can see that the Henry is done. So here we see this part here. We can see that there's a numerator, which are the numbers on top. We can see there's a denominator down here. We can see that each part uh, has, uh, is represented. So here is our primary. Here is our secondary. Here is our subsecondary, these, these three things here. This is our major, and then we have our key and our final. Um, it's important uh, when we're developing Henry to remember that each box on the fingerprint card has a particular number. So if you look closely at the 10 print card, it's important to remember that each finger, remember the top five boxes are the right hand. So finger number one, which is this, this box here, is the right thumb. Finger number two is the right index finger. Finger number three is the right middle finger. Finger number four is the right ring finger. Finger number five is the right little finger. Then down here, Finger six is the left thumb. Finger seven is the left index. Finger eight is the left middle. Finger nine is the left ring. And then finger 10 is the left little finger. Now, in order for us to do a Henry, this 10 print card needs to be entirely classified. So that means all 10 fingerprints need to be classified as either arches, loops, whorls. Uh, if they're loops, we need to know if they're ulnar or radial loops. If they're loops, we need to have uh, ridge counts like we have here. Uh, if they're trace, if they're whorls, we need to have the tracings because all that stuff is important for us to develop a Henry. So we need to have an entirely classified set of ten prints to be able to do a Henry classification. Now, important when we're doing our Henry classification, if you look in your fingerprint manual, you're going to find that there is a form there 
It's uh, around page 63 in your manual, and it's this sheet here. Uh, you're going to want to get that out as we go through Henry because this, this form is going to be very helpful for us to do, to, to do our Henry. I'm going to refer to this as our cheat sheet, so have that in front of you there. Uh, I'll show it to you in a number of slides, but I want you to have this out because we're going to use this cheat sheet as we develop our Henry. So again, Henry system is important. Uh, the next series of videos are going to talk about how we do a primary, a secondary, a subsecondary, the major, the key, and the final. So uh, tune into our next video.